My creative process is simple. It's really just um, living, truthfully, like just going outside, whether it's taking a walk, taking a drive, going to a museum, standing at a drug spot. It doesn't matter what it is. Like, you absorb energy from anything that you're around. So, like, the more that I live, the more that I write. Like, if, I, if I'm just in the crib or not doing much, I don't write much. But between traveling, hanging out, and just going outside, like, you just absorb energy and you put it back on the paper. You know what I mean? That's how things get birthed. When I go to the studio, I go to work. Nine out of 10 times I'm by myself, maybe with one person, and I get things done. When I leave the studio, anything wild in the world could happen. Before I get to the studio, I could have been in the mix with anything. But when I'm there, I'm really just working. If I wasn't an artist, what would I be? I don't know, probably just like an amazing human you ask questions about. Like, yo, who was that guy driving through, coming through in that? And, with all these things on, what's he about? What's he up to? And I'll probably be more like a ninja. Like at the end of the day, I'm kind of, I'm a very private person. So the only reason I have like social media or like contact with people at all is cause I do music and now the television thing. But if not, I'll be just someone in the shadows that you saw here and there in question. Like, who is this guy? What's he about? Favorite three underrated MCs. This is an easy one. First, Cool G Rap. I say Cool G Rap's underrated because in my opinion, he's the best of all time, and if everyone doesn't call him the best of all time, he's underrated. Second, AZ. AZ is a beast. AZ is an animal. He's like a master of what he does, and people respect him, but I don't think he gets the credit that he deserves. Third, I gotta just say MOP. Like, I know it's two people, but in my opinion, that's my favorite rap duo of all time, you know? I'm not gonna say group, but duo, there's, there's no two that like have a chemistry like that, go back to back and just, destroy everything like MOP, so. You know, people are underrated for different reasons, you know what I mean? It could be um, exposure, it could be content. You know, like MOP, I get it, that's not everybody's cup of tea. But if you love that type of rap, they're the best at it, so. You know, I don't know, that, that could be what it is. Hard to narrow it down to just three, top three underrated producers, um, Fourth Disciple. He made a lot of crazy Wu records, and you know, obviously, you know, RZA did, Whatever he did, Riz is the man, but like, I kind of feel he was like right there with him. Like, he made a lot of heat. Go back to MOP again, man. Little Fame is an underrated producer. Like, a lot of people don't even know he's a producer, but like, their hardest joints, like, it's like Primo, DR, period, and Fame. Like, a lot of the, you know, Fame joints are crazy. And, um, yo, what happened to Tone and Polk? I haven't heard their names for a long time, but they made fire. Like, yo, Tone and Polk, if y'all out there, come on, let's let's knock something out, man. They had Queen sounding real good. So come on, so many joints. So many joints. One of my favorite track masters joined the day, How to Rob, Joint the Different Nori. Like, just a ton of things, man. They, they had fire. I mean, there's a bunch of producers that I respect, but at the end of the day, like, I, I work with so much talent and I have so many good people around me. It's no one I'm, like, necessarily reaching out to, but whatever happens organically happens. Like, obviously, it's, like, Primo, RZA, Easy Mo B, you know what I mean? Dudes like that that just did classic records that I was raised on. But for the most part, I, I have a good team around me that I work with. School should be about exploring all talents. It should be about exploring all crafts and making all, poss all opportunities possible. And when you cut out anything out of the programs, you, you, you minimizing the, the chances of somebody to become successful. One of the first conversations I, I had with him, you know, he, he loved my uniqueness. He loved my originality. You know, he always said I was an icon down to my, my Staley logo. If you ever seen the Staley logo, you know, he's like, man, you an icon. That logo should be everywhere. And he always used to say, don't let anybody tell you what you can't do. And before then, like, he was like bobbing his head and then he looks at Ian and he goes, he's so fucking good. And like, for him to say that, it was like, damn, like he thinks that about me? Like that was just, that blew my mind. And there were a couple different times where he was, took something I did and he said, Big Pun used to do that. So I could have got next to him because we had Gordo with us, that's his man. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, yo, you want me to make that? I'm like, nah, he trying to party. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it was a, once in a lifetime opportunity, nobody, I don't know because it didn't go down, but I didn't want to disrespect the man's privacy. 